Hello and welcome to a video covering a bunch of mid-level account goals. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. We're kicking off with a lower level required goal being level 50 rune crafting to unlock the rune goldberg machine distraction and diversion. This is a daily you can do to make up to 1 million GP in just about 2 minutes of work. The rune crafting guild is the middle portal located at the top of the wizard's tower which you can easily teleport to by using your wicked hood or alternatively you can just walk there using the drainal lodestone and then heading to the top floor of the wizard's tower and going through the middle portal. The way you make money from the goldberg machine is simply by using cheap runes to get a right combination for at least like 70 or 80 viswax and that way you get a lot of output for less input because if you use the expensive runes that sometimes are required to get 100 viswax which is a perfect combination you'll probably be making less money because the input costs are going to be higher. The perfect first rune will always be the same for all players every single day. The second rune varies between a couple runes and the third rune is completely random but with the 99 rune crafting skill gate perk you can actually see what it is but this is of course a mid-level goals video so uh, you probably won't have that. I used to use a discord bot but that doesn't seem to work anymore so I use the rune goldberg tracker website to track the first rune every single day. I'll link that in the description below if you want to use it. Next up, we have completing the Beneath Cursed Tides quest, and this is actually a free-to-play quest, although the D&D that you want to be doing this quest for is partially members. Uh, free-to-play players can actually gain the fishing experience, but I don't think they can get the rewards. Now, this D&D is called the Giant Oyster D&D, and it's really good farming and fishing experience, and the reason you want to do this D&D every month, or twice a month, because you can use monthly D&D reset tokens, is because you have a chance at fortunate components and dies which are hundreds if not billions of GP. You can literally get those clue score rewards from doing this oyster and all you really need to do is feed the oyster, open it up after a month and that's it, repeat the process. Next up we have unlocking Varia Watches and the Reforged Sun Spear. This is gained by completing the River of Blood quest. The River of Blood quest is a long vampire quest line that is actually quite annoying and tedious to do although you might enjoy the lore. By completing the quest, you will have the Reforged Sun Spear, which is a tri-rid tier 78 weapon, which means you can switch between different combat cells, being ranged, magic, and melee, as you wish. It can be used to train on Vire Watches, which are one of the best combat training methods in the game, especially for Iron Man. The reason Vire Watches are such a good training method is because not only are you making money from them drops, but you're also getting fire making and prey experience at the same time by automatically cremating the Vire Corpses as you kill them using that Reforged Sun Spear. You can gain Slayer experience if you're on task, because these are a Slayer task, and of course a mid-level one. You can gain farming experience from the Cedar side if you have it, and you get a good chunk of common experience as well. The items you get as drops on Vire Watches are good money for main accounts, but are also really good for training Herblore if you're an Iron Man account, because they drop a lot of noted herbs. There's quite a bit to know to AFK these properly though, and that's why I'll leave my guide linked in the description below. Next up, we have Training Slayer Beyond Level 81. Now, I'm fully aware that this is a cliche thing to say in a goals video, as it's pretty much a standard reply when people ask how to make money in RuneScape, but Slayer Beyond Level 80 gets really juicy. Tasks like Ascension Creatures at level 81 are good, Spiritual Mages at level 83, Abyssal Demons at level 85, and Corrupted Scorpions at level 88 are good examples because they're good money, good common experience, and usually they are good charms too. This is definitely something you want to aim for as Slayer is something you're going to be training eventually anyways if you want to max your account. Speaking of Slayer, getting at least the full Slayer helmet which requires level 55 crafting, 35 Slayer and 400 Slayer points is something you should put on your goals list. Not only does it protect you from certain Slayer creatures like Banshees or Aberrant Spectres, it also gives you a 12.5% boost in damage and accuracy against all Slayer creatures on task. And when upgraded it gets even better but that will cost you more Slayer points. Now you can actually put it on a Slayer Helmet stand in Anachronia as well once you have the Dinosaur Tooth Drop and you have the level 3 Slayer Lodge. That's something I would consider a high level goal though, not something mid-level. Next up we have leveling Dungeoneering up to level 85. Now not per se because of the Frost Dragon Dungeon, but Frost Dragons are always going to be a consistent money maker and definitely something worth doing if you want to make some really consistent GP of Slayer Task. 
Alongside just having this dungeon, you'll get access to plenty more resource dungeons, which makes Dungeoneering worthwhile. In fact, I made an entire video covering why Dungeoneering is worth training, and if you're interested in that, I'll link it in the description below. This isn't per se a goal you should aim for, but it's an idea because the other resource dungeons you unlock are incredibly useful for general things. Next up is completing the hard or even the elite series village achievements, which I have a guide for, again linked in the description below, because you'll be unlocking one of the most useful comma items in the game being the enhanced or if you do the elite tasks elite enhanced Excalibur this item once activated will increase your defense by 15% and heal you 4% of your maximum life points for 20 seconds every four seconds so five times and with the elite version that is double to 40 seconds so 10 times 4% of your maximum life points. This item is incredibly useful for PVM as it heals you over time, reducing the amount of food you need every single boss kill or perhaps during a slayer task. This will allow you to go back to AFKing. Definitely worth unlocking for every single account, but it does have quite the amount of stat requirements and some quests to unlock. Next up, we have completing the World's Wakes quest, and you guessed it, again, I have a guide for it, which I'll link in the description below. Now, this quest doesn't have any hard requirements. They recommend certain quests for the story, but you can definitely do this quest at tier 70 or level 70 combat stats and gear. The quest takes about 45 minutes using my guide, and it's pretty much just killing a few bosses, saving an NPC, doing a few puzzles, and that's it. You'll get three quest points, a bunch of different experience lamps depending on your stats, and access to five new ultimate combat abilities, and the most important ones from these two are the Sunshine and Death Swiftness abilities, which increase your damage by 50% while standing in that ultimate ability. This quest is 100% worth doing and should be done by every single player in the game. Next up, we have obtaining 150 quest points and allocating those to the combat track at the quest point shop near the Varrock Lodestone. This will award you with a tier 75 hybrid armor set and a tier 75 weapon that you can change to melee, range, and magic, much like the Sun Spear meaning it's a tribrid weapon. This speaks for itself, and you're going to be obtaining those 150 quest points anyways. Next up, we have obtaining every single PVM aura you can unlock at War's Wares at the PVM Hub, aka War's Retreat. These auras cost Marks of War. Now, you have a cap of 1,000 Marks of War you can gain every single hour, so it doesn't really matter what bosses you kill, but certain bosses give more Marks of War than others. Since the Marks of War cap is 1,000 per hour, that would mean each aura would take you a certain amount of hours to gain. For example, the Maniacal Aura would take you 25 hours. The Vampire's Aura would take you 5 hours. And you can gain these passively if you're going to be bossing anyways, so it's something you can unlock over time. If I were you, if you're doing Slayer, I would recommend getting the Vampire's Aura first, and then focusing on the Zerker Auras for bossing, which are the Berserker, Reckless, and Maniacal Aura. And finally, unlocking the Dark Magic Aura last. The final goal of this video is getting a basic gear setup. What do I mean by basic? Well, having some kind of tier 80-ish weapon and tier 70 power armor. Tier 70 power armor is Bandos, Subjugation, and Armadol. You don't need to have three combat styles with tier 70 armor and a tier 80 weapon, just make sure you have at least one as a goal to aim forward to if you don't already have that. Simply because you're going to want something like that for Slayer and bossing as a sort of baseline because combat is the best way to make money in this game. There are skilling methods that make you plenty of money, of course, or Vizwax, or daily shop runs, but generally, comma is the best way to make money in the game. With that being said, we have come to the end of this video. If this video helped you out, be sure to leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.